Nell Fletcher, how Hi. are you today? Fine, how are you doing? I'm doing really good. It's it's so nice to finally get a chance to chat with you. I've I've been admiring you and your family's profile since we were introduced to you. So it's very nice to meet you today, Nell. Well, thank you. That's good. I you um, as well. Thank you um for that. I uh I remember when we first were introduced to you and your husband Chris, mm -hmm. and then when we got a, a larger peek into your family. Um, I was very excited to see you guys joining the cast of Love and Marriage Huntsville because your family has so many dynamics and layers to it. The first part of which that I want to um, start with is the aspirational element, right? You see a Black family doing well financially, uh, successful in business and entrepreneurship and raising grown children who <laughs> appear to be well-adjusted. So talk to me about... Uh, First of all, your decision to even participate in Love and Marriage Huntsville. How did you and Chris decide to be a part of the cast? Um, actually, my husband kept asking me about it and asking me about it. And I really hesitated a lot. I really did not uh, want to do it. And then uh, we kind of like made some appearances mm -hmm. uh, on the show. And my husband made more appearance than I did. Okay. And um, uh, Mel asked me about it next. <laughs> okay. Um, and I was like, well, I'm not ready. <laughs> now, why um, weren't you ready? Why were you a little hesitant, Neil? Because my, my family is a lot. <laughs> okay. Okay. They're they a lot. Um, when you have adult children, most, um, most people whether it's uh, from Love and Marriage Huntsville, um, most of these shows have smaller children mm -hmm. and, uh, or teenagers. Um, we have actual adult children. They actually are grown. And yeah. grown. So when you get to see all of their mess, uh, their day-to-day -day life, okay. things that um, they're dealing with, and you tend to deal with it yourself as the parent, it was like, oh, hell no. Like, <laughs> yeah. no, I need to stay off here. <laughs> yeah, I think you bring up a great point. Uh, and, and further to what we were earlier speaking of, that's a great contribution that you and your family have as a whole to the cast. You do have adult children. And I think that with adult children come adult stories, right? Your children have their own lives and experiences and stories that add to kind of the texture of what your family brings to the show. So I think it's very brave, first of all, to even introduce that for your children to be willing to participate in that as well. Uh, black people, we're notoriously private. And so when it comes to things like that, I do understand how that may have given you just a little pause when it came to joining the show. Um, yes. But we're glad that you did. We're very glad that you did, Neil. And I, I think that viewers have come to really appreciate um, the the marriage that you have with Chris Fletcher and your connection to the other couples. How long have you and Chris been married now? We have been married 30 years as of July the 27th of this year. Wow. wow. So right now it's 29. Uh, next month it'll be 30. It'll be 30. That What an accomplishment. My parents, have, they just celebrated their 53rd wedding anniversary. So, And it's four of us children that come from my oh, parents. So I see a, 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 a parallel kind of in the family dynamics from what I saw with you guys. I'm the youngest of my parents' adult children. And uh, we all have our own backgrounds and, and, and stories. And so I kind of appreciated what I saw you all bring to, to the landscape of Lovage Marriage Huntsville. So thank you for sharing that with us. Um, talk to me now about the the background, I guess, the history of your relationship with Chris. Now, we were introduced to you all as sort of a, a, a mentor couple to um, Melody and Martell. At the time when they were still married, you all were presented as friends of the couple who mm -hmm. kind of uh, had a big sister, big brother to little sister, little brother relationship with the Holtz. How did you and Chris meet uh, Melody and Martell? Actually, Chris, my husband and Martell knew each other already. Okay. Um, I knew of Martell uh, from uh, Look Chris Jr. Mm -hmm. Martell uh, was a teacher over at Sparkman. Okay. And, um, at the time, I know Chris Jr. was there. I want to say Lance probably hadn't graduated. Lance was on in college. But 
Chris Jr. was like, oh, Holt, Holt, you know, you know, he called him Coach Holt, but okay. I think Martell's actually a, a teacher. Okay. But, uh, he loved Martell, very intrigued by Martell. Martell had all this swag to him. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, who is this guy Martell he's talking about? And then my husband was like, oh, yeah, that's that's one of the coaches from school or one of the teachers he know. Uh, but then um, my husband knew Martell, too. I think they both had a landscaping company. Mm. Um, my husband had his uh, Fletcher's landscaping. Um, I don't recall what Martell's landscaping was, but company was. But mm -hmm. I know he had one. And then um, kind of like uh, a, a, a relative of my husband is friends with Martell, uh, Torres and Martell uh, went to school together. So my husband already knew Martell. And he was like, I guess, I oh, mean, we got to link up. I want to introduce the wife to my wife. So and that's how I met Mel. Um, Fletcher, I guess, had talked to Martell about some things he was dealing with or going through. Okay. Um, my husband had mentioned it to me and, you know, thought it would be a good idea for them to introduce me and Mel to one another. So they introduced um, me and Mel to each other. And we kind of like just hit it off from there and uh, started like really speaking into their lives and hanging out with each other, spending a lot of time getting to know each other, telling them the do's and the don'ts mm -hmm. of being married, the challenges you're going to go through with being married. It's not easy. Uh, you got to put in the work if you want to be married. Um, most generation, this generation at least, um nowadays throwing the towel so quickly um mm -hmm. they they don't it, it's like uh uh I'm 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 out you know <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I, I just want out so we became like their mentors their counselors and letting them know you guys are a beautiful couple you have four beautiful children they kind of like had the dynamic of me and Fletcher except with them they younger um, we looked, they were a power couple. We're a power couple. We're just older, more mm -hmm. seasoned, I would like to say. They have four children. We have four children. And the beauty of what I was explaining to them is you all didn't come into the marriage with any children. Mm -hmm. These are four children um, um, that you had actually in your home all together. Mm -hmm. Me and my husband both came into the marriage uh, with a child. Uh, I had Lance, he had uh, Lexi, so, and they were like six months apart, which still to us, you know, is dynamic of yeah. uh, a family. Um, but I do, I do know at the time it was three. Uh, I want to say Milani wasn't born yet. Uh, mm -hmm. And in the midst of us getting to know each other, they kind of threw out there like, what should we name the baby? This, that, other. So yeah, that's how we, you know, gotten close to them and we were like at one point um inseparable. <laughs> Every yeah. time you seen us, you seen the hopes. You know, we were always yeah. doing things together. But yeah. It sounds like a really a really beneficial relationship for the two of you, especially the Holtz at that point. You know, it was seek getting that sort of um be gaining um confidants, you know what I'm saying, in you and and Chris Fletcher, your husband. For both Melody and Martell in it, I, I wonder what your I wonder what your takeaway was at that time, considering where we are now with the state of Melody and Martell's relationship. As we know, they've divorced and going on about their lives. Mm -hmm. Did you foresee that outcome at the time, or did you think that it was a relationship that would have uh, maybe withstood a few challenges that came its way? I thought it was a relationship that was going to make it. Mm -hmm. um, just looking at the two of them already having the foundation of a family, kind of the white picket fence, you know, that everyone yeah. wants. They, they had the business. They, they had each other. Like I said, they're both good looking. This power mm -hmm. couple, they had the house, they had the beautiful children. It was like, no way. We 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 gotta go. <laughs> we yeah, we got to like let them know you have it. You just gotta hold it, secure it, you know, hold it down. And there was a lot of talking, a lot of 
long nights, um, just pouring into them, trying to speak to them. Um, and they were listening. Um, I think Mel was listening more than Martell at the time. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I, COVID hit. I, I want to say I remember them coming by twice. And I, I did. I did tell Fletcher something, something's not right. Um, you could tell a difference at that time. Mm-hmm. 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 Yes, because everybody was at home. We were at home. Um, I'm always in my yard doing my gardening. And I could just tell something had shift. Um, yeah. At that moment, we really didn't talk about it. Um, Martell was more of, hey, we just stopped by to see what you guys were doing. Mel was like wanting to hang around and, you know, we chopped it up for a minute, but he was ready to go because he, okay. he he's usually not um, wanting to hear what I have to say anyway. So. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, that 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 tracks for what we've seen, right? Yeah. Um, but digging back into a little bit of of your own family, right? Um, again, twenty nine years of a marriage is is definitely an accomplishment. It's something to be celebrated. Um, especially in today's climate when it comes to families and 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 things kind of falling apart sometimes. But for some reason, after a 29-year long-standing marriage, once your family was introduced to the public and to fans, they had a lot of questions about the origin of your relationship with Chris, Chris Fletcher, right? And kind of what was going on in each of your own lives when you became each other's acquaintances. Um, and it's been fueled by a lot of different things that we don't even have to get into, but just so that you have an opportunity, um, cause that's the point of these conversations, right. To hear what, what you have to say and get it straight from the source. Right. What would you like to share with, with everyone to just kind of clear up the timeline of how you and your husband of 29 years, almost 30 years, Chris Fletcher met in the beginning. What is the origin story of, of your relationship with Chris? Um, for me at this point, that's nothing to really clear up. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm over it. Um, I know mm-hmm. the truth. God knows the truth. Everybody has their truth. If you do the math, the math don't math. Um, our son, Chris Jr., he's 29. Um, mm-hmm. We've been married, what, next month? 30 years. Um, before I um I want to say whatever it was. I was say I can't even. I don't even try to keep up with all the the mess, the 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 drama. It it is it's, it's it's too much. I can't really entertain it. Um, when I met my husband, I want to say that was in December. Um, I don't even recall <laughs> the year. Yeah that that it was I do know it was around the holidays it was around Christmas um but his oldest daughter she is 32 mm-hmm. my son is 32 Lance my oldest Lance will be 33 this month mm-hmm. so they were they're like six months apart she's 32 Lexi she'll be 33 in December Lance will be 33 on the 19th of, of June Mm-hmm. Chris is 29. So no one married me just be saying I got pregnant. I was nowhere near pregnant. You're 29, you got 30, 31, 32. Okay, you're 32. Chris and Lex is three and a half years apart. Yeah. <laughs> so right, right. Make it make, make make it make sense. The only sense out of it is when I did meet my husband, and I was very transparent about that. Um he was married that I did mm-hmm. not know. He did not share that with me at the time. Of course, we did meet at a club. Mm-hmm. Um, so ev- everyone knows that. I want to say uh, a few months later, I found out that he w- he was married, but uh, his first wife, they was not even married a year. So mm-hmm. technically, they could have gotten a normant. Uh, mm-hmm. That's why I said, I don't like to throw stones for stone. If no, you, for sure. If you're going to Talk about something. Talk about that you married him or he married you because you're the one that got pregnant. <laughs> okay. 
not, not me. You and him got married because you were pregnant with a child. And y'all's marriage was what? A year? If that. And then you was divorced. It happens. But your yeah. marriage had nothing to do yeah. with it or why you're not married anymore. So I know the truth. Right. Most people here in Huntsville know the truth. Um, I, I can't entertain the ignorance. Right. Um, and I, I just really wanted to give you a chance to kind of just speak directly to that conversation because there's been a lot of um, different things being said about the state of, of your husband's relationship when you all met. Um, and, and again, this is your husband of 30 years at this point. So it's it's really a moot point, exactly. but, but just to give you an opportunity to clear things up for your name. Um, when you guys did meet, what was the state? Was he where him and his, you said it was a, basically a brand. They new were show. legally separated. Yeah. Thank you. That's what I think people need to hear you say. They yeah. were legally separated. Mm -hmm. And I told him until I know this for sure. Cause I will be honest. I'm, I, I have no lie to tell you. When yeah. I found out he was married, I was not happy about it. I was yeah. not happy about it. She know that they were separated. He know that they were separated. She wanted to talk to me about it. Hey, I will take a step back. So in case you and your husband want to work things out. This lady said she did not want to work things out. He did not want to work things out. They were legally separated. He was going to get the divorce. So that had nothing to do with me. And as yeah. far as me having a pregnancy, I was not pregnant at all. Yeah. Like I said, he came into the relationship with a child. I came into the relationship with a child. And that's that's just that's just what it is. Yeah. Man, yeah. you guys have a a, a beautiful family and it's mm -hmm. I almost feel funny saying a blended family because as you mentioned, when you all became married. <laughs> Or became a unit. Your children that you had were quite young. They were what two years old when you guys got married, yeah. or, or somewhere I, around I, there. Actually, so. um, they was not even two. Yeah, they, they were close to being two. They were still what, like, well, I want to say Lance was close to two. Uh, they're six months apart, so uh, Lance was walking. He was he was right at two. Lexi, them being six months apart, she could have only been like what? Mm, 18 months. 18 months. Yep. Yeah. Like that. Yep. That so do you feel like good. there was a, a a process of even blending for you all's families or was it just kind of, it just started operating as a unit being that your children were so young when you all did get married? Well, the thing about it is even, um, even after everything and it was okay because they were legally separated yeah. and then they went ahead and got this divorce. I was Lexi's mom right off the bat. Yeah, for me sure. And, me and the ex-wife communicated right off the bat. Yeah. You don't communicate with no one you got a problem with. You're yeah. not showing up at no one's house that you have a, 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 a problem with. You're not asking no one to take the kids to school that you have a problem with. They both even went to the same child care. You talk about a joint custody here. I mean, even I, I want to say, I think she mentioned I allowed my son to go to the movies with her and Lexi. I did. I did because you didn't have a problem with me. I was not a problem. I yeah. had nothing to hide. Y'all clearly, your marriage was over. You, it Apparently... You married for the wrong reason. You married because a, a child you you were date you were dating, and a child was being born, and you wanted to be married, and you got married, and it didn't work. You didn't even stay married. What you weren't even married what, a year, a little over a year, but they never made two years. So I I wasn't your issue. Now you want to make me your issue? <laughs> Why? Because I'm on TV. <laughs> because yeah. Lexi is mad that I'm not I don't feel like I should be the issue I've always been told I've been I'm a great stepmom I know I'm a great stepmom I've always went over and beyond 
with mm. my stepdaughter, for my stepdaughter. It mm. would be, oh, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. You're a good stepmom. I wouldn't go out of my way to uh, make sure she eats certain type of foods. But for me or in my husband, it was more of, well, she's going to live with us. So while she here, let's try to make her as comfortable as we can, you know. She didn't, she wasn't a child or the kid to eat collard greens and cornbread. Mm -hmm. She always wanted fast food. She always wanted ketchup, McDonald's. So we did. We went out of our way to make sure when we had Lexi, we was going to do it Lexi's way. Okay. And that's, that, that, that's what we did. But it wasn't a problem until they started getting older. And as you get older, you want more. And all this big mess came into about me buying um, Kayla, uh, my daughter, my biological daughter, a car for her graduation. Um, but what no one wants to talk about is, okay, Lexi, you had a car. Lance had a car. Chris had a car. Kayla was sharing a car with my niece, Kiki. At the time, we had bought a Honda Accord, uh, $800. We purchased it from mm -hmm. one of my husband's family members. Mm -hmm. These two young ladies that's in the household with us, Kayla and Kiki, was supposed to share this car. Kiki pretty much took over the car. You know, Kayla was upset, crying. I was like, don't worry about it. Just drive your daddy's truck. Everyone around town knew Kayla drove a big red dually. <laughs> the dually. Okay. Yep. Took a driver's test, everything in it. Made a hundred on the driver's test in this dually. <laughs> <laughs> Rolling, but, whipping so that big truck. Yes. So when she graduated, I surprised her with a Mercedes. Okay. What's wrong with that? You're talking about a straight A student. You're talking about yes. someone who has to be, okay, can you take me here, Lance? Can you take me here, Chris? Can you take me here, Kiki? Even Lexi coming down, showing off in her new ride. You mm -hmm. know, she's like, everybody got a car but me. So yeah. there was a problem when I bought her a car. I mean, Lexi had a new car. Uh, her and Chris got a new car the same year. Well, um, what do you think the problem was, Nell? Because um, to me, it, it sounds like, these are the types of stories that we want to see on television, right? I wish we would have been filming at that, or you all would have been filming at that time, because seeing a straight-A Black student who's a scholar, right, be rewarded with this, this beautiful gift, you know, by her parents, I think that is something to be celebrated. So what do you think maybe caused the pivot or turned that to a something that created some sort of negative energy? I I think there was... Something between Lexi and her mom and okay. my husband, Chris Sr. Okay. When it always came down to, um, I want to say first and foremost, the the, the, the child support. Um, okay, okay. He's paid his dues. He's paid his child support. I think where she would get mad is we, we would make sure she have clothing, um, anything she needed for school, all the extra things. But when we bought Kayla that car, well, when I bought Kayla that car, she felt some type of way. But what they did not talk about was my husband mentioned to help buying her a car. You're mm -hmm. already paying child support. It's like, okay, we still got things in this household too. We still got children in this household. We understand these are gifts. I mean, anybody know you go to court, whatever. Um, when you do things for your children, it's gifts. Uh, Lexi has other siblings on mm -hmm. her mom's side. Her mom has four children. And mm -hmm. for us and for my husband, it was like, okay, well, who else is going to be driving this car? <laughs> like, this car I'm buying, I'm not, you know, me and my wife are business owners. I want to know who's going to be driving this car, how the insurance going to look, all those type things. There was never agreement that could come between, okay, Lexi getting this car and taking it up the road to, to Nashville. So that's where it came in, like, okay, well, 
you get our car, you won't get our car. That was the argument between her mom and my husband. But I, I'm not gonna not reward my daughter because of something they cannot get clarified with her mom and her stepdad, which she calls dad Al. Mm -hmm. it, it, it was it, it was a lot. It was a yeah. lot between the the, the parents uh, when it came to the car. As far as uh, we get the car, who's going to pay the car insurance? Who's going to be driving the car? Um, they have teenage children mm -hmm. as, as well. And um, my husband didn't think he should have to pay the price for. You cannot just say Lexi going to be the only person driving this car. Mm, OK, OK. And sometimes that that can, I can see how that could get a little a little dicey, we'll say. Um, as far as the communication goes and feelings attached to that, you know, um, it sounds like you all, and from what we've seen on television, you all have a lot of love for the children in your family. And so I can see where they would kind of want that love maybe to feel as if it was just dis distributed evenly right amongst each other. How are, how are your children doing today now? What's the, their relationship like with each other today? They good. And, and just to piggyback on that a little bit for me, um, My stepdaughter has been very disrespectful to me, too. So okay. even though me and my husband, we're married and we do look at all our family as one. Mm -hmm. I don't do the disrespect. Mm -hmm. I don't do the disrespect. Even me saying, shut up, Lexi, that wasn't just to her. That was to my son, Chris. And her, Lexi was bouncing off of each other, playing at the table, goofing off. I had literally told Chris, you need to shut the hell up. Lexi was like, oh my God, this is that. And I was like, shut the hell up, Lexi. And that's what was caught. So mm -hmm. it made it look like it was just Lexi that was I was coming for. And that was not the case. Lexi was not just the one. Actually, Chris was getting it too. So it was it was not just mm -hmm. Lexi, and that's the way it you know everybody thinks. Okay, where some people think, okay, she just don't like her stepdaughter. This no, I have been a great stepmom. Mm -hmm. Um, I have loved on Lexi as she's been a child as an adult. Lexi has spent time with me. Me and Lexi do things together, shop mm -hmm. together. It's it's just. Her mom has always been that witch. Um, I I do think um, at some point I don't I do think her mom may have wanted to reconcile the marriage, but mm. I do. Um, what makes you think that now? Even though she, well, if you over somebody, you and you know, if you gone on, you to moved on, you to moved on. Mm -hmm. You you and there's not you're not gonna keep harping over something that rehashing things rehashing it in this it's 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 for what it's not there if if you're truly moved on you 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 move on um but the bashing for no reason I I I, I don't I don't get it and I and I actually think um. Her, her spouse that she has now, I want to say they've been married at least 15, maybe longer years. Mm -hmm. um, uh, like I say, I was there before him. Um, she was doing her thing. We had Lexi a lot. And okay. she met him. And we got introduced to him. And that's why I say I, I, I don't understand all this. Like it's mm -hmm. It's crazy. But even you would think you would tell your Lexi should be able to see the truth. Let me say that for a long time for me, it was okay. She's older. She'll get older. Um, she's young. She's teenager right now. I meant to say um, when they 15, 16, 17 and the mom and dad, not really talking. It was mostly me and her talking to mm -hmm. each other. Him and her didn't do a lot of talking. It was always me and Lexi's mom. 
That's why I said we had a good relationship. Um, then as Lexi got older, it's like she just formed her own opinion. Um, yeah, I've been cursed out several times. <laughs> oh no, okay, okay. So, like I don't do like you're not gonna just stand toe to toe and curse me out and as you saying, you burn the house down and what has this house done to you? <laughs> like it, um I I just think there's some things there that just hadn't been related truthfully to her. But mm. that's her mom. Who am okay. I? That's that's that that's her mom. And I'm not gonna sit there and talk to her anyone's daughter about them or have yeah. a bashing session. Yeah. Because clearly you've even told me, well, my mom has told me to bring my dog to y'all's house and let him shit on your floor. What? I it's it's so much. It's so much to sit <laughs> well you think you're being liked and you're not. <laughs> so what kind of what what kind of path forward do you see? Because obviously from from the outside looking in, right? What we saw even in the 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 spirited dinner scene where we were introduced to, you know, your family, um, it seems like and it, and but even from what you said to me today, you have a lot of love for Lexi for your stepdaughter, mm -hmm. and and so what do you see as a path forward to getting you all into better standing as stepmother and stepdaughter and mother and daughter essentially from someone who you've been parenting since they were one and a half years old what do you see as a path forward to to peace for the two of you well i stand by whatever my husband decides mm -hmm. now i've been disrespected several times mm -hmm. this is not the first time it always comes back to um well I didn't get this or I didn't get that. Yes, you did. Yeah, yeah, yes, you did. I mean, we sent gifts. We paid child support. You got things. Now, that doesn't mean we've got to punish the kids that's in the house. Mm -hmm. We can't just send your mom and your stepdad and their other three children everything and don't do nothing for these kids over here. Like, why why they not on front street? As many times as you've told us you've had to go to dinner and pay for your own dinner. I don't have to do that when I come over here with you guys. I think Lexi is torn in between two families. And I and I get it because you have three siblings on this side and you got three siblings on that side. And, and that's right in the middle. Yeah. And nobody wants to talk about it. Yeah. Her mother does not want to talk about it. And I have been trying to talk about this for a long time, but who am I? She make me seem like I'm just not important enough to talk about it. Well, Lexi shouldn't even have these come. Lexi is grown. And then I talk to Lexi and she'll like, she gets it. She gets it. But then when she's back in front of her mom, there's a totally, you get a totally different young lady that's who's a lady now is married. So for me at this point, I'm out. I love you. That's not going to never change, but I can love you from a distance. And that would be the same way if it's either with one of my children. I kind of got the same situation with Chris Jr. I love you, but you're not going to keep stressing me out. I can love you from a distance. You're grown. Y'all make choices. You got to live with those choices. So live with your choices. Especially when I know in my heart and from the bottom of my heart, I've done what's right. Yeah. So you're not, I'm not going to be tormented. I'm, I'm not going to be nicked and picked at over no material shit. I'm, I'm right. Not, no. Well, you, you're not going to be made to be feisty, right? <laughs> well, I'm already feisty. So. <laughs> well, listen, we, we... I, I, I'm not even going to lie. They, <laughs> they got it. They didn't lie. <laughs> well, I'm we feisty. definitely wish. You all to we, we wish you all peace and, and harmony and love in your family, whatever that means for you all um, as a unit. That's what the viewers definitely want to see. So giving we're giving you great energy towards that. 
But I just want to pivot a little bit back towards the, the cast of Love and Marriage Huntsville, right? Because we have seen, as we saw in this past episode, there is now a, a brewing, what looks to be a brewing tension between you and Letitia Scott. And I don't think people really kind of saw that coming, you know, before tonight's episode. So talk to me a little bit about just your relationship with Letitia. I know that you said that um, you all were in a close relationship with Martell and Melody when you joined the show. Were you familiar with any of the other cast or were you, did you have any connection to any of the other cast, Kimmy and Maurice or, or Letitia and Marceau? No. Um, I would like to say they they came in our circle through uh, Mel and Martell. That's okay. how we we got to know them. Um, other than that, I, I knew nothing about the Scots. And I still don't know <laughs> much <laughs> about, about the Scots. I've hung out with them. Um, and I, for me, if you sit there and watch it, I'm not the only feisty one. Uh, mm. You can say Miss Nell feisty. I may be the first one to go from zero to 100. <laughs> and you're not going to lie on me. I do not do liars. I tell my kids that don't lie. Yeah. Word is your bun. Do not damn lie on me. And yeah. don't try to make me out to be something just to make yourself look better. Don't hide behind your own bullshit. So if I've gotten feisty with anyone, they brought it and I have finished it. Okay. But other than that, I do not mess with no one. I stay in my own lane. I mind my own business. I just do not rat off, rip, go picking with anyone. And that was not for her to say, I'm feisty. I did nothing to her. She came yeah. to me. And it, and it was from what Trisha, the new cast member on the show, which we're going to mm -hmm. talk to about her in a minute here, but... Mm -hmm. From what Trisha mentioned, it seemed as if Letitia said this to her as a warning of sorts, kind of letting mm -hmm. her know to to create some sort of boundary or, or defense when it came to you. What do you think that was motivated by? Because in this week's episode, without giving anything away that may be coming later in the season, but in this week's episode, we saw Letitia say um, at your birthday party, which looked like a lot of fun, by the way, but at your birthday party, we saw Letitia say... Um, uh, we're going to get when you were asking her basically what the source of her kind of uh, demeanor was with you that night or the energy she had. She said that you would talk about it later and we never really saw you guys talk about it. So do you talk about it eventually? And, and what do you know the source of her anger to be? Who, Letitia? Yes, Letitia. <clears throat> Letitia wanted to get an arouse out of me and she did by calling me Lernell. First of all, my mother is passed, and that's the only person who called me Lernell. So whoever leaked that out to her, they was wrong for that, because I take that very dear and seriously. And I told her, that's Nell to you, Lernell. That's Nell to you, Lernell. And I said, you're doing the most. And she said, I can. I was totally thrown. I didn't see it coming. And I told her, and I can do the most too. So I was not expecting that. I did not see that coming. So if we want to talk about who's being feisty and who's staring shit up, I could say that to be her. I just do not stir up anything. I just do not start anything. As I say, I'll finish it. I'll let you know how I feel. Sometimes I won't say nothing. I'll let them have it. I just be like, I can't. <laughs> you know? But um, I would like to say that um, that could have come from Martell mm. when they see me getting in Martell's face. But what most people don't know is Martell got in my face first. Okay. And I, and I walked away from Martell. I was like, Martell, I'm not going to do this with you. You got it. I walked off and he came out behind me. Like, as if I'm male or something. Like, no, I'm not done. We're going to finish this. Who do you think you're talking to? And that's when I swung around and went off on him in his face. So I'm pretty sure that's where that's coming from. 
So previously, when you had had maybe some kind of tougher conversations with Martell and Melody, had he displayed that sort of response to to your your conversation before? Or was that something new for you to experience from him? Um, I won't quite say it's something new. He's done it here before. Okay, he, okay. He's done it. I want to say, I want to say, y'all, y'all see me get into it with him on my porch. And I told him, take your ass on. Y'all ought to stop telling lies and shit. I was <laughs> <laughs> So okay. it's not like he hasn't done it before. Um, I don't think I've been in a conversation with him where I've walked away and he come behind me. Mm-hmm. And he's like, whoa, where this energy coming from? And I and I turned around and I went off on him. Like, don't walk yeah. up on me. Don't, don't, yeah. don't, don't, don't do that. So yeah, and okay. I'm pretty, it's pretty much all stemming from my jail. Okay, and, and prior to that, um, that sort of moment where you were informed that she had said that about you, there had been no previous real tension or 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 combative nature between you and Letitia previously, right? No, she she was from what she she's mad at me. Uh, she doesn't feel like I took up for her. Um on social media. Um, she felt like I downplayed her um, as a friend. And I like to say everyone's been using this word friend very loosely and reckless. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just came to a ball where, you know, I, um, hey, um, if you feel that way, I, I, I apologize. I was just making a statement. That you have your own, you have your own group of friends. I'm, I'm no more than a mentor to you. And I didn't say anything wrong because she said it several times. Miss Neil, I want to talk to you. I want to ask you some questions about marriage and this, that, the other. I mean, you guys seen it in the scene before. Like, you know, have you guys ever had infidelity? We've gotten into that conversation, you know, privately. And I'm like, why did you ask me that? <laughs> mm-hmm. Why did you ask me that in front of the world? Like, and we kind of chopped it up, um, talked about infidelity, talked about men, talked about our marriages. So when I made that statement, it was all bouncing off of her saying, Oh my God, you're really sweet. You you are, you're like the little mentor, you're like the mentor of the group. You said that behind closed doors, but then when I said to social media, you get mad at me and blow me the, you blow the hell up over a comment that I made. So it's like, you know what? There is no friends. There's no love loss here. We are damn associates. Mm-hmm. So you clearly, if you felt a certain way, could have picked the phone up and be like, hey, hey, Neil, what was that shit right there you just did? Why, why, why did you just Put that out there. What what that text right there was about. But no, you you clearly waited till you seen me at my birthday party and you came for me and I didn't see it coming. What did you think about the moment we saw in tonight's episode, Neil, where um, I believe Melody had given you a compliment about you looking 20 years old and then there was a bit of a beat and Letitia said she looked at you and kind of assessed you visually and then she said, you look about 30. What was that moment like for you in real time, uh, Nell, when that took place? Honestly, Dustin, um, it didn't bother me. For me, mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, I don't think I look 20. Uh, I, I've been told I look 30-something. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of flattery. Um, I might be my biggest critic, and that's why I constantly try and take care of myself, but um, it didn't really bother me. It's like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm older, um, but I do know I look good for my age. Um, do I think I look better than some of you ladies? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I do, or uh, just as good, but uh, I, I'm not into okay, you look 20, you look 30. Um, 
It's nothing new. It's uh, yeah. people tell me that all the time. Oh my God! And I, I thought you was in your thirties or hell. If I put on a updo ponytail, whatever, somebody say twenties. Hell, I know I don't look no damn twenty. Who <laughs> you fool? <laughs> Well, I think you all, all of you, are, it's, it's a beautiful cast to be a part of. I yes. think you all are a gorgeous, black, wealthy, and 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 busy cast. And we love to mm -hmm. see that. Um, what was it easy for you to not invite Martell? Considering the history that you guys have as longstanding friends, right? Was it easy for you to not invite Martell to your birthday party? Because we know initially you had expressed that you did not um, agree with, I think were the words you used, um, his uh, arrest, his recent arrest that we know we saw play out on the show. And then you got a little clarity on that from Melody. So did your, was your decision not to invite him influenced by maybe some of the information you got regarding what led to his arrest? And what was that moment like for you? Well, for me, mm -hmm. and this is my truth, the statement that I made first about black men, that was something I was pissed about, a situation that happened to my son. Okay. Lance, and he could have he could have lost his life. Mm -hmm. he, he's never Lance has never been in trouble like that with the law. Mm -hmm. Um my son Chris, yes, of course. Um, but he had his son with him and he was getting jacked up, thrown around on a car. And it, I was on the phone with him and I could hear and I kept saying, where are you at? Where are you at? Just tell me. And the officer was like, you need to get off the phone, get off the phone. And it was getting ugly. That's scary. And, and my grandson was in the car. Yeah. Fortunately, he wasn't far from where we live at. And I said, give me the officer. You don't show up here. Make a long story short. I mean, my husband shows up show up anyway and he's roughing him around throwing him around and I was like I want your badge and I'm, I need someone else out here like Lance what did you do he was like he pulled me over said I was speeding yada 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 something was called in uh, apparently from um, the ex-wife um, that they getting into it about uh, him not releasing his son to her husband Okay, and that's what started that um another officer was called in um uh, more seasoned older gentleman he got the spill of it um what actually took place uh with diesel diesel's last name it was it was just a lot um, okay mm -hmm. that was taking place between him and his ex-wife and when the other cop came and got the logistics of all of it, he was like, let him go. This is, it, it, the rest should have never happened, basically, because we had proof of everything mm -hmm. that was happening and taking place. So they wound up letting him go. So when I made that statement, I was pissed because what I heard was he had the kids or some of his kids. And all I could think about was Lance had his child and how did it actually go down? It triggered you in the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It did. Mm -hmm. it, it really did because my grandson could have lost his dad in that moment. I seen this with my own, that, that pissed me off. Yeah. And the way it was handled. Yeah. With the younger officer. And it took another officer to come and assess the whole situation and find out what really was going on to release my son up off that car from right. jerking him and throwing him around handcuffed like that. Right. And he wasn't as resisting arrest or anything. So when I made that statement, it was not to discredit Mel. Mm -hmm. um, it was not to discredit whatever she's dealing with, with Martell or anybody. Um, I think sometimes people go too far when they don't know everything or what someone else's issue or processing going through. But I did make the statement. Um, and I'm a big girl. I always say when I'm wrong, I can say I'm wrong. 
I don't think I should have made that statement because um, the world don't know what mm -hmm. I'm dealing with or what I've dealt with and why I said what I said. But that's why I said it. Um, as far as him being accountable, everybody should be accountable for mm -hmm. whatever they do wrong, uh, especially if they find you guilty. And if you're guilty, and, and I didn't know their whole situation and exactly what it was for. Um, at some point, I just tried to stay out of mail in Martell's business as I was then. Sure. Like, it was brought to me and I spoke on it and it was like, oh shit, I shouldn't have said it. <laughs> anything. Because um, I, 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 I really didn't know. I honestly did not know until actually really speaking with her uh, privately um, up about the situation. But even with uh, him, um, my my son now, Lance, Chris, I tell Chris all the time, stay your ass out of trouble. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, you, if, 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 if you stay out of trouble, you don't have to worry about going to jail. You don't have to worry about getting arrested. So I'm not one to just think, oh, because they're my sons, they shouldn't go to jail. No, that's not me. Not 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 by far. Let let's be yeah. clear about that. I, I'm um I'm I'm forever telling them, you know, to stay out of harm's way. I I will tell them your chances are slim to none as a black man. So you do need to stay your ass out of trouble. Stop looking for trouble. Stop doing dumb shit. <laughs> you yeah. know, you yeah. don't have to worry about it. So yeah. Yeah. So that definitely did then influence your decision to not invite Martel to your birthday party. Then once you kind of became aware of the of exactly what was going on, maybe it was it was easier for you to make that choice. No, it wasn't. It was still hard for me. Okay. I'm true to myself. I have to be mm -hmm. sure that mm -hmm. was still hard for me because regardless of where they're at, I met them basically at the same time, my husband. Yeah. And I met a beautiful couple, uh, a striving couple, a powerful couple. And they moved on now. She has her life. He has his. And I'm sure they 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 both should be happy. I know she says she's happy. Yeah. And we all have to accept that. And I have accepted that. But for me, I don't feel like I should have to kick someone to the curb um, because of their mistakes. He he still needs someone. He whether it's me, my husband, I'm sure his family, what have you. Real friends don't just go away or pick sides. Or I I can't shout with you no more because you're divorced from mm -hmm. male. So I, I can't I can't ride for you. I can't talk to you. Uh, don't stop by the house no more. You know, lose my number. That's not who I am. I, 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 that's just not who I am. What he does know is I could never entertain the other woman. Okay. I could never do that. Because for me, I've seen the breakup. I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. I've been there for a male and him. I don't know this lady, but I know what I like, what I don't like, and I could not entertain him. So it's not like we're around him like that anyway. Okay. If he pick the phone up and say, hey, Nell, you know, I need such and such, or can you or Chris do that for me? If it's not life death threatening, then we're going to do it. Or he might stop by the daycare, just passing through. Hey, just want to say hello. How everything going? I mean, how 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 the kids doing? I'm not gonna be like, you need to leave. We we ain't talking to you. 
no, I'm I'm not going to do that. So yeah, that was hard for me to pick a side because he's always said pick a side. Um, now I'm feeling like hmm. Mel feels like we should pick a side because I had to pick a side. Who am I going to invite? Mel or Martel? And being that I I do speak to Mel more, uh, I talk to her more. Um, it did hurt me. It, it bothered me that I had to tell him that he couldn't come. But I, I had to understand why they could not be in the same setting. Why they yeah. couldn't why they couldn't be in the room together. It would have caused friction. It it probably would have caused my birthday party to go left outside of it going left. <laughs> <laughs> so I I I I I do get it and it's like, whoa, this is like this is serious. Uh I tell people all the time when they say uh or act for everybody to think we're always in Mel and Martell's business. Trust me, we have our own business. We have our own shit. <laughs> so please let the world know that. Like, <laughs> it's not that we're always in their business. We're always asked about it. Uh, yeah. So it's like, oh my God. <laughs> it's hard. Have we argued in sports streams over it before? Yes. Have it been a, to a big topic? In our household, yes, where I think he's wrong or he may have said something to my husband. She may have said something to me, and I'm like, well, no, that ain't true. I've already talked to Mel, and I talked to my girl. She said this, and he been to talk to Martell, and he said something different. And we've had to come to him and be like, you know what? We're not going to talk about Mel and Martell. That's what we're not going to do. We're exiting Mel and Martell stage left out of out of our yeah. household, yeah. so we can keep our peace and our sanity. And they probably love it too. If hell, we stop talking about them. You got to keep your peace. You got to so keep. I'm gonna grant. I'm gonna grant them their wish. I love yeah. them both. I wish them both well. I I really do. I think at in my eyes, they both are beautiful people. Um, on the outside, sometimes <laughs> people not so good on the inside. <laughs> But, you know, everybody has to be accountable for whatever they're dealing with, whatever, yeah. whatever, they're, whatever they're going through. And she may not see his beauty and he don't see hers. And who am I? I'm not God. I, can, I can't fix it. I couldn't fix it. People well, speaking of seeing beauty, right? We got one last question for you now, and then we can go on and get out of here today. Uh, are you able to see all your beautiful shoes now and your beautiful clothes? Did you get the closet that you asked for? Or what, what's the status update with your new closet now? <laughs> no, I did not get the closet that I asked for. Um, however, I do have a huge closet now. Okay. I just wanted the glam closet with mm -hmm. just my shoes mm -hmm. because I do have so many shoes. Mm -hmm. um, that's the part of I would probably, and I hate to go over my son's head and hire someone else to come in and do it because he's just so busy. Um, he keeps telling me he's going to do it. Um, he's going to come take the measurements and so we can get it done or get this ball rolling. And I'm, 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 I'm still waiting. I don't have that closet. All right. Well, we're gonna have to get your damn closet going. Maybe, maybe you can call the Scots, and that can be the tie that binds. Right? You can have the Scots come over there and build that closet out. You know, and that can be your path forward. That's hilarious. Well, listen. Thank you so much for your time today, Neil. It's, it's really been a pleasure speaking with you and watching your family on Love and Marriage Huntsville. And like I said, we just look forward to seeing you all live a peaceful, happy life and, and, and getting to know you all better on the show. So thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you so much right. for having me. Of course, right. of course. Okay. We'll chat again soon. All right. You have All a great right. day, Dustin. You too.